thought Mystic needed some <coughs> industry to support the town. And I made these structures, and I thought, wow, that's, it, it just overwhelms it. I, I just keep one. And so I, had, I got rid of that one because it was just too much stuff. Next one, please. When I did that, then this, the road bed was exp exposed and broken plaster and stuff. So I had to put some plaster in. Next one, please. So this this is the this is the um, result. So next one, please. I decided to make a like a powerhouse for the the Appleman Woodworks, and this is just a two-piece piece of uh, cardboard to put together. Next one, please. And I streaked it, and I put a, a brass tubing on there, a couple guy wires to keep it erect, and there's nothing more. That's all, all there is to it. Next one, please. This is one of the fool of the eye techniques. This is a branch with some foliage on it. And next one, please. That hides the fact that this roof is actually going underneath the scenery right in here. You can't see it. This helps to the great distance between the, the roof and the scenery. So you can use these things to your, your own benefit. It implies that there's a tree back there, but there isn't, of course. Next one, please. Apple, Apple was made with cap siding, and I use end scale windows for the, for the structure because it A structure like this needs small windows, and and the HO scale ones were just a little bit too big. I put some stonework around the foundation. Next one, please. Now I painted the all the windows apart, of course, airbrushed them. I have a roll of two two-sided tape that I stretch, on a, stretch over on a piece of one by four. You can do it with one side of tape if you want to staple it taut and, and so it's nice and flat. And just put your windows on there, it holds them nice and, and you can paint them easily. Next one, please. I rummaged around to my old uh, work box and, and I found this dust blower. Nothing to write home about, but uh, I used uh, some angle wood for a, to hold it up in place, and I put it on the back side of the the roof because I didn't want to draw attention to it. Next one, please. Now here is the easiest, most economical, fastest way to to create interior detail. This is a piece of cardboard. The same thing I put the floor on just a couple sides ago. Very thin cardboard. I made a regular shape here. It could be any shape. You, could, couldn't, you didn't have to have a slanted one. You didn't have a T one. Put anything you want. And then color it with, with subdued colors. This, this wasn't painted. This was done with chalk. And you want to keep it muted. You don't want any bright colors. Next one, please. And I glued it to the support beams in the corners of Appleman, so it's about a quarter inch back from the windows. You don't want it right up against the windows. Next one, please. And now you can see something in there, but you don't know what it is, but it looks like it should be part of the machinery or part of boxes or, or something like that. And it works even, you'll see a, uh, a little sh illuminated shot from Appleman in a minute. Next one, please. Now, Amy Stills dry goods couldn't afford big plate glass windows, so she had to have it made with panes. Next one, please. So I made an outline of the of the window. I used two by two styrene. I put the center one down, held it with scotch tape in place, and then I cut some pieces and joined them in at three equal intervals, much like this, and then. When it was dry, I, I cut them all off at the 
window size, and I made two of those. Next one, please. And now she's got paned windows. Next one. A while ago, I bought 120 prizer figures for about 10 or 12 bucks. And in, in that set was a lot of people going to the beach. And I don't know whether the Europeans either wear their suits under their clothes and then shed their clothes when they get there or they, they change on the beach. I don't know which it is, but you find piles of clothes in the, in the set, the shoes, hats, umbrellas, all that was, was nice, nice interior detail, detail for dry goods. And I used the mannequin here to, to draw attention to it. Next one, please. And there it is in, in uh, Kate's. That wallpaper, another pattern on my computer I used so it wouldn't have a white wall. Next one, please. Next door is the bank, and it had a wooden floor. Tables and chairs were much like I did with Kate's. I got some green pieces of paper for blotters and pieces of paper around. You notice I, I put a piece of paper over, black paper over the upstairs windows. When it's open, it would only have the downstairs open. Next one, please. There we go. Let's start now. Hopefully, we'll get better. All right. We went through, through trees and foliage. This isn't really trees and foliage. This is a retaining wall for the narrow gauge. And I needed one because this area here is going to be a, a truck support for the, for the freight house. So essentially, it's a part of trees and foliage because it's made of wood. It's a cribbing. The horizontal pieces are two by 10 or so, and then I put enough room to put uh, one eight square pieces in between, look like cribbing. Next one, please. Of course, you can't see it, it's just a, you see it a little bit there, but I know it's there. <laughs> Next one. Okay, this is my weed. And off that weed, we got all the, those other ones. Uh, you can do that next time. Yeah. And what's that? Well, they, they go to a bush about this big. No, I mean. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, I see. Uh, they're about about three high. The tallest one is probably about this high. Well, I can't see your hands. Give me a finger. <laughs> so, six, seven inches. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. But they, they grow in a bush, and they usually grow in a place where nothing else grows. I meant to bring a, a tree along, but I forgot. All right, next one. Here's a, a way to make a, a that's the end of fir trees. I wrote an article on this before. Get an, um, an old piece of window screening when you're, re when you're pre replacing with new and use the old stuff. And uh, with tin snips, make some vertical cuts in there so that, and, and vary the size of the, the height of each one. Next one, please. And this is what you end up with. Next one, please. I go with my needle nose pliers and down the center of each one and put a uh, and fold the screen over on each side to get a little more three-dimensional look to these uh, trees. Next one, please. Then I liberally apply Elmer's glue. Next one, please. And I put woodland scenics foliage and grass and everything. Use the, the, the dead stuff with the Stuff that is, don't use anything too bright. Next one, please. And this is what the trees look like. So I go one more step further. Next one. I load some Pullman Green into my airbrush and I 
put it at a low angle to get a, a, a shadow base, and then I go up once every tree to get a little shadow under, under the, the foliage. Next one, please. These are some that, that are at the, at the approach to, they're about two inches tall. They, you, you don't usually use them by here, but I, I did. They're at, at the approach of the narrow gauge going up the hill. Next one, please. Here, here, here is a better example of it. Notice how it blends with the backdrop, so it, it looks like it's foreground trees. And it, it's very simple. Very simple to do. It doesn't require any any dexterity to make these things. Next one, please.